always teaching written in the stars, like some people would say that our destiny is to lose the competition in India and China. Is it so that India and China are going to carry that torch of civilization from now on and our destiny is just to fade into the deep of history? Because it's very, uh, it's very fashionable to have that way. We are mesmerized by the massive growth of economy in China and India. We are mesmerized by the massive growth of population in this country. We are tempted to think that, that these numbers tell us that they will win and we will lose. But uh, once again, this is a kind of intellectual fashion to think this way. And it's not necessary, it's necessarily true. Um, if I analyze China in the light of Chinese history, I would say that China is actually closing its dynastic cycle. Like always in China, out of chaos emerges a new dynasty. In this time, for example, China is a communist dynasty. It unifies the country and creates many great things. <coughs> Since it has its in possession huge powers of Chinese labor and will to work. Of course, and you know, intelligence to work. And intelligence to work, yes. But then happens the inevitable. Population grows. Uh, this has happened several times in Chinese history, and the society starts to polarize. The, the land on upper classes, usually in history, they become stronger, and the plight of the peasants grows greater and greater over time. And the civil service that, and the whole system becomes very corrupt. As we can see today, China is becoming one of the most corrupt countries in the world. So the money does not help Chinese, it only corrupts the system even more. At the same time, you have to remember that all the wealth in China, all the highways and the retail cars and the skyscrapers, they are all built by using our money, because we have outsourced our production into China. But now we buy the products back. Of course, this equation doesn't work for very long. No. Because in the end, we come to the situation that if here and the United States is either unable or unwilling to buy Chinese products, then what do the Chinese have? The bubble bursts. So in the end, Chinese economy, just like Indian economy, it's a bubble and it's waiting to be fixed. We know that. And so is ours, unfortunately. Of course, but the, for the Chinese, it will be even harder. Because at the moment that the whole Chinese society is in a turmoil, masses are moving from the countryside into the cities. And now, if the bubble bursts, happens what has happened in Chinese history many times before, the emperor loses the mandate of heaven. Yes. And once the emperor loses the mandate of heaven, the result is a city. Right. So therefore, I would I wouldn't be so sure that China wins us in the end, even though the numbers at the moment seem right. to be against us. I mean, we've had this before. In the 18th century, the, the philosophers of the Enlightenment, they were very excited about China. China seemed to be the only country in the world which was governed by civil service, where the men were recruited by their men right. instead of by their birth. Some of them. Some of them, yeah. obviously. But... Soon, a few decades later, Europeans started thinking of the Chinese movements, backward right. dictatorship which is falling into anarchy, which then happens at the So, one should not expect too much from China. All this boo-ha about China being the number one and taking... They're certainly producing and using the most cement, concrete in the world. If you look at the figures, yes. it's huge, unstandable. Yes. I mean, we know that in China, the, the economic uh, uh, environmental crisis is immense. And, uh, okay, when Europe was industrializing the early 19th century, also we had a massive population overgrowth as well. But we had this one advantage. We could send the population overgrowth into Americas and Australia. So Europeans spread across the planet and that allows the population of no fear they will destroy our societies but in China they don't have this chance because the world is already full obviously millions of Chinese are moving out but still they are only three close right they are thinking about Africa they are actually thinking about Africa but in the end the question is do we allow them 
because now we are talking about the natural resources of the planet, and when the going gets stuck, we get nasty. Yeah. Well, I'd like to respond. I'd like to respond. Uh, yeah, I don't think you see what I see, which is that, yeah, China's in terrible trouble. Yeah, they have economic and ecological problems that are going to destroy them. But unfortunately, it's going to be part of the collapse of global civilization. When I say collapse, I don't mean total collapse. This is something that didn't come out in my talk yesterday. I didn't talk very much about global economic and ecological collapse as you know, a crisis that is already on us. Yeah. Collapse that's already begun. I didn't talk about that very much. I talked about other things. And, uh, you know, that, that is a large part of my thinking, that actually I came to that before I came to my racialist political conclusions. I, I got into this through realizing that a collapse is going to happen and then thinking about how the collapse could be survived and then working back from the fact of that survival to what the preconditions must be to allow this survival. So I actually came to racialism after I came to understand that we were undergoing a collapse. Okay? And so, um, yeah, I mean, I don't see how China can possibly collapse into civil war and massive starvation and, and, and gigada without everyone else pretty much having problems too at the same time. Obviously, obviously all these things lead together. Right. And uh, I don't know what time it is in New York at the moment, but they may be already practically selling their stocks. There may be cash going on right at this moment. We only 